Hey, I'm Mike Zima. I'm a digital marketing expert and I'm also the chief growth officer of Zima Media. In five years, I've helped over a thousand websites set up Google Analytics on their site. And along the way, I've discovered that hundreds and thousands of dollars was being lost by our customers because of poor or improper setup of Google Analytics. You are no exception and I'm going to help you set up your Shopify store to have the proper tracking in order for you to get and collect the results you need to make informed business decisions that are going to propel you to the top. So this course is super easy. I'm gonna help you along. There's some great resources. So let's just dive in and set up Google Analytics for your Shopify store. Come on, let's go. Step one, creating a Google Analytics account. This is very straightforward. As soon as your Shopify store launches or during the process of building it, make sure you go and visit Google Analytics and set up an account. It's free to use and it'll give you all the insights you need in order to gather information about your customers. So click sign up and this will give you a prompt that will tell you to set up an account. And it's really simple. All you need to come up with is your account name. I'm doing Salsa Verde for my skin store. Make sure you do all of the data sharing because this will give you more insights from Google and advice on new products. Click next. You'll see that website is default. You just want to keep it there, but Google Analytics works in a lot of different places too. Now, again, it'll ask you for your website name, and this is like your folders. So in this case, we only have one website and one account. So again, Salsa Verde. And then I want to go and get the URL. Make sure you click HTTPS. Go visit and check if you're WW or non-WW and copy that over here. Now, for your business category, this is important because it gives benchmarking data to see how you stack up against your competitors. Make sure you select your most appropriate category. And the most important tip that most people fail to miss with Shopify and Google Analytics is your reporting time zone. Your time zone has to be the same in both Shopify and Google Analytics and your CRM, or else you're going to have discrepancies in your data. A lot of the time, this is where you're going to scratch your head and what's happening. In this case, I'm just gonna do Chicago because that's where I'm from. And I should be good to go. You have to accept all these permissions. And that's it. You've set up your Google account. Uh, there's a lot of email features here, but you can just save that. And they have a mobile app you can check out, which is pretty handy, and I'd recommend downloading it. And you're good to go. And now you have your Google Analytics code, but before we use this code, we're going to go into the next steps. Let's look at the Google Analytics dashboard. If you click the bottom gear here, this will take you to your admin panel. This will be your home page. There's also a little tab here that brings out other features. You'll have your home, which will be your general analytics when it fills up, and it will give you a nice look overview. Your customization is where your reports are. Real-time traffic is where your analytics is going to gather uh, about people who are on your website right now. Audiences is very insightful because this breaks down who's coming to your website. Acquisition breaks down where are they coming from. And behaviors is going to give some benchmarks around what users are doing. And this is a little more custom. When you start setting it up, you get more data. And conversions, this is our favorite for e-commerce stores. There are some attribution discovery features which are useful for ads and trying to utilize other features. But in this case, we're just gonna to continue to set up the account. So now when you go into the admin panel, you'll see you have your main account and then you have your property. A property is a web page that you can list under your account. So you can have multiple website domains here. And when you look at the property, the next nested item is going to be a view. And this is where your analytics lives. And this is where a lot of the customization happens and the customization on the whole domain happens here. But in this case, what we're going to do in step two is set up the necessary views. So when you go into your view settings, your default is going to be this all site view. It has your time zone. It has everything else that you've set up here along the way. In this case, we're going to just click copy. We want to copy it, call it master view. And now we have one master view. And now we need to go in there, view settings, copy it again. And we want to set up a test view. This is important to have multiple views because it's not only a backup for your data, it allows you to create different filters and it allows you to view different data. Now, when you go over to the property settings here, a pro tip is you can change your default view to your master view. Now, when you go into your analytics report, it's always going to pull up the master view so you can see what the most current data that has all of the right filtering that we're going to set up here 
report for your Google Analytics. Now we're going to exclude internal traffic. This is really common if you have different people on your team visiting your website consistently throughout the day. You wanna filter them out in order to reduce any inflation in your analytics. And it's just a good practice so you have a clear sight of what your website traffic is really doing. And filtering is really easy. When you go into your admin panel here and you go into your property and your master view, you'll see something called filters and you can go ahead and click those filters and they're not set up by default. A lot of things in Google Analytics are not set up because it's custom to your use case. So make sure you add a filter. And this one is going to be called exclude internal traffic. This case, we're going to use predefined filters, exclude IP address and select ex begins with. Now to find your IP address is pretty simple into Google and you'll get your IP address. So you go in here, close that out and save it. Now you're all set. You can block your internal traffic here. This filter can be very sophisticated if you wanna do some network blocking. Let's say everybody at your work is on the same network, then you can block partial IP addresses so everybody on your network gets excluded and you can really go into depth in what kind of filtering you wanna do. This is fairly advanced and you have to have a pretty good idea why you're going to filter out certain traffic, but please keep in mind that this is a very useful feature to give you the most precise data about your Google Analytics. This one is really easy. So when you go to your admin, property, master view, you click on your view settings and you make sure that your bot filtering exclude all hits from known bots and spiders is checked. Google Analytics was actually plagued by spam traffic that was inflating numbers. And Google was a little lazy to keep up with those spammers, but now they're pretty good. So make sure this is turned on. If you already have an existing Google Analytics account, it's great to look into it because it wasn't checked by default before. And this is gonna prevent a lot of headache. So that's it. You're all done. You should be blocking any spam traffic. Sometimes you'll see unusual numbers. It's not perfect, but Google does the best they can in order to prevent any sort of malicious traffic coming to your site, inflating your numbers. Now we want to set up site search. This is one of the most useful features. And again, is not set up by default. When you go into your store and you go ahead and you search for mask, in this case, I'm looking for face masks, You'll see in the URL, you get a little queue here, and that means query. And this is how site search works in Shopify. And a queue is a pretty much a default a lot of the time. So make sure you go into your view settings and you turn on site search, and then you enter the query parameter and you click strip query parameter out of URL and you click save. Sometimes when you get really advanced, you can do site search categories so you can start filtering out your collections. However, this isn't necessary because Google will do a pretty good job at tracking your searches. And if you have tens of thousands of e-commerce products, you can actually utilize a lot of depth from this tool. But remember, you have to go to your all sites view and apply this as well, because this is not turned on by default. And this is going to be a good exercise to illustrate the importance of setting up something in one view. And if you want that to report into another view, you're also going to need to set that up there too. So let's proceed on to the next section. Step six, set up demographic reporting. This is a very important step in order to fulfill your Google ads campaigns to the fullest. It allows you to gather insights around who is visiting your store to make tighter campaigns in Google ads. It's very simple. Go to your admin property settings. And when you click your property settings, scroll down to advertising features, enable demographic and interest reporting. And look at that, hit save and you're done. You'll have insights around who's visiting your store in order to launch a successful Google ads campaign. Step seven, add your site to the referral exclusion list. This is probably by far the most important step in Google Analytics. I've saved customers hundreds of thousands of dollars by making sure their tracking was set up properly. So what is it? When people check out, you can lose where they came from. And this could be a disaster for Google Ads. You don't know what your marketing dollars are doing and it will leave you scratching your head. So don't make that mistake and make sure your referral exclusions are set up and also set them up for third-party apps that may interfere with your checkout process. Now it's pretty simple. Go into your settings 
Now, when you look at tracking info, you'll have an ex referral exclusion list. By default, Google now adds your domain name, so your traffic isn't going to get counted against itself. And you wanna go in here and make sure you add checkout.shopify.com. So anytime there is a Shopify transaction, traffic leaves your website and comes back to your website so you don't lose that cookie. And a very common one is going to be PayPal. Some of you are using PayPal. And if you're using any other cards or checkout features, make sure to check with them first if they need to be added to a referral exclusion list. And if you aren't tracking your data correctly, make sure you check where your checkouts are happening. And a lot of the time it could be a referral issue. So pay close attention to it because this could be the success or failure of your e-commerce store. Step eight, set up Google signals for cross device tracking. This is a really advanced technique that allows your Google ads to go into overdrive and not only your Google ads, but also your SEO and social media traffic. Anytime somebody visits your website, whether it's on a desktop, tablet, or phone, they'll visit your website through another device. And this is how Google Analytics figures out who's who and it starts to join them together so you get a more dynamic, profile about the people visiting your store from admin, property, visit tracking info, and data collection. So this is where you're going to get a little wizard and you click get started. Now follow the prompts and make sure you read everything here. Select all properties and click activate and done. Now Google Analytics is going to collect data on your customers and start building more dynamic analysis in what they're doing on your website. Make sure you hit save and you're ready to go. Step nine, add the Google Analytics tracking code to Shopify. This one is my favorite step and it's almost the home stretch here in setting up Google Analytics for your store. Make sure you go into your dashboard, online store preferences, and you'll see that you have these fields to install the tracking code. So when you go back to your admin, tracking info, tracking code, you just take this code and you copy it into Shopify. And it's really straightforward. You copy it in and you save it. Shopify does some magic here and you're all set. Make sure you flip, use enhanced e-commerce and you're good to go. You're getting the maximum features that Google Analytics offers for e-commerce. And all you have to do is go in your back end, look at your master view. And then when you look at your e-commerce settings, you have to turn on your e-commerce and enable enhanced e-commerce and click save. There's one last step that you need to do, and this is a pro step. You have to go into your shopping cart and just check out. And the default, a lot of the times, is when you add it to your cart, you view your cart, and you start on your cart page, and you hit checkout. And you're going to have three steps for Shopify. You'll have step one, two, and three. So information, shipping, and payment. Go back here and add your funnel. Information. shipping, and then payment. That way you'll see where in the funnel people are abandoning and it'll give you more clarity to see how far your marketing pushes them to make a sale. Now you're all set with Google e-commerce e tracking. Make sure to turn it on your all sites view and your test view in case you want your data to go there. I'd recommend doing it because it'd be a good practice to have consistency between all of your Step accounts. 10. Verify Google Analytics implementation of real-time reporting. Go to your website, refresh it. Now inside of Google Analytics, you can start using your tool sets here. Go into real time, overview, voila, that's me. I'm coming up and I can see the locations and I can see myself tracking right now. Give it 24 hours for the data to start loading into Google Analytics and you should be good to go. You're tracking your visitors and your sales. Congratulations. Step 11, set up enhanced e-commerce goal tracking. This one is a really advanced step and it really matters on your business goals. A lot of the e-commerce tracking is already done on your website, but you may want to set up other goals like contact me or if they visit a certain web page. These are important to measure any sort of marketing you're trying, but I'm going to set up a simple one and give you an overview and how it works. So when I look at this particular product, I have the URL of this product and I want to track it anytime somebody lands on it. So when you go into your admin panel and under your master view, you're going to see goals. 
There's about 20 goals you can create. You can import a couple of them from galleries to test, but I'd recommend playing out here. So you'll see that there are some templates you can choose from. Revenue, acquisition, inquiry, engagement. And this is all very cool. You can track product views, product add to carts, address, shipping, payment, etc. All that's tracking, but really let's look at a product view goal. So I'm gonna set up a custom goal here and I'll just show you a breakdown. Goals require a name, the ID between one to 20, and also the types of goals. You have a destination, so if they visit a certain web page, a duration, how long they spend on a web page, an amount of web pages they're visiting per sessions, an advanced one, which needs further setup, is an event, so if they take a certain action by submitting a form or clicking a button, this can all be tracked. So we're gonna set up a quick destination goal, move forward, and I'm going to call this view black sugar and then it equals to this you can assign a value to it you can assign a funnel and this is where it gets really really complex because you can have custom marketing funnels set up with goals but you don't have to get carried away with it and hit save and you're good to go you have a view black sugar one and you'll see this start to tick up as soon as people start visiting it make sure you consider what kind of goals you want to set up and whether or not you can find many of these goals inside of google analytics your e-commerce tab is going to have a wealth of information so make sure you start utilizing your reporting as soon as it starts loading data i know flat line isn't impressive but your line is going to start rising the more marketing you commit to your store starting today thank you for watching this show. Shopify marketing course. Every day we're launching new Shopify marketing content to put you in the driver's seat of your business so you can have full control of your marketing and advertising. Hit subscribe, hit notifications, and tune into the next video that's starting now.